Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane. Here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. We're in the peak of the planting season, May. It's been glorious. It's beautiful. In fact, it's almost been too nice. Plants are are actively growing. Your heat-loving plants are going a little slower. It's been a little chilly for them. So my mimosa trees in the backyard, yeah, they're leafing out, but they really like it to be in the 80s and the 90s. They even flirt with the hundreds. They just like it hot. They like it sunny. They like it bright. And so they're leafing out. They're just in a slow motion. This 70 degree stuff, they like it warm. So you'll find your grapes. They're the same way. Your desert willows, the same way. There's a lot of crepe myrtles, a little slow to come up. And so you're, you're, so things normally should be in bloom by now. They're about a week, 10 days delayed just because it's been so nice, so cool. The benefit of that is your flowers will bloom much longer because it's cool out. So the cooler it is, the warmer, the more humid, uh, the moisture kind of keeps them blooming longer. So your geraniums, the petunias, the, the pansies and violas are still glorious. They should be starting to fade by now. It will. June is right around the corner. That's when it starts to get warm and you see a definite transition from spring to summer because it gets warm and hot. And we need that warmth to bring the monsoon rains in the end of June, July, August, September. And so there's this cycle that we have in the mountains of Arizona. Right now, because it's been so cool, you need to put something on your radar. Uh, There's a couple things. One, it's been windy this week. This is normal spring It just is windy in the spring in the mountains. It's just part of the game. Um, Watch if you planted new trees. It's a great time to plant new trees. Spring is probably the ideal time to plant trees uh, because you've got a huge selection at the garden center. We probably have a thousand trees. I just unloaded two more semis of big, bold, glorious shade trees, fruit trees, evergreens. There's a lot just to choose from in the spring. If you're planting trees in the spring, you need to stake them because it's windy. So they'll start to lean to the northeast. Generally, we we have this prevailing southwest wind that blows in the evening, in the the day. We have windstorms, like a couple of them this week. Uh, But your trees, if they're new, they're, they're still young. They're And they're putting on that new tree ring. As a leaf, they immediately afterwards start to put on a new tree ring. The the trunk gets larger and they put on more roots. So that's another reason why it's so good to plant trees or these bigger shrubs in the spring of the year. You get this extra flush of root growth. But if it's not staked, that tree ring, if it's leaning to the northeast, that, that southwest wind is pushing that tree towards the northeast, and it pushes on, a, it puts another layer, another ring of, of wood, it'll solidify in that direction. And you walk your neighborhood, you'll see a lot of trees leaning. They're all kind of leaning the same direction. Uh, it's because they weren't staked when they were younger. Just stake them for usually one year. If it's a real small tree, maybe two years. If you get a couple seasons of ring growth, of tree uh, wood growth on that on that tree, it locks into place and it's not going anywhere. It'll grow straight as an arrow. Uh, especially true, especially important for your fruit trees. If you're planting a new apple, it's good apple year. There's lots of apples, lots of pears, lots of peaches on the trees this year. There's lo- lots of fruits. And it, if it's leaning and it loads up and adds another 200 pounds of peaches or apples or pears or whatever, and, and it, all of a sudden it's leaning, I've literally seen trees fall over because of all the extra weight of that fruit. So you want to make sure that that weight is evenly distributed over the trunk or the scaffolding of that particular tree. So you train it and there's some things you do. 
Now, that's not the point of, of this uh, conversation. R right now, it's just make sure they grow straight. So if you, if you plant a new trees, it's probably good to stake them. We, we actually create stake kits here at the garden center here in Prescott. Two lodge poles, uh, some wire, and, and, a, and a strap that kind of keeps it from girdling the tree. Just It's all set up. It's easy to put in, but you need to make sure you do it. Uh, you could you can use almost anything as a stake, field fence. Just just don't let it. You want to make sure that it's allowed to move, but not bend over. So you want it to be able to sway in the wind. So if you bought a tree and it had a a bamboo stake right next to the trunk, you really do when you plant it. Take you want to take that off, uh, so that the plant so the trunk can sway back and forth. It creates muscles within the tissues of that of that uh, wood fibers. Uh, but you want to put a, tree, a stake on either side of the root ball and then take some cable or some wires or some, some rope or something and uh, tie it to the trunk so it can move back and forth but not lay over. Super, super important for, for your bigger trees, especially sycamores, maples, cottonwoods, willows, uh, all those bigger trees, ash, locusts, they all will, will appreciate that. And all your fruit trees really need it. Because if they load up next year with lots of fruit, they'll fall over. It's just some things to watch. Another one to watch right now, because it's spring, and there's a couple bugs that show up in spring consistently in the mountains. This year, one is particularly bad, and you can't even see them. So it's called a thrip, T-H-R-I-P, thrip. Well, sometimes they're called noceums. And they, they were kind of bad a couple weeks ago. I thought, oh, well, that's not that's nothing to worry about. Well, they've gotten to the point where you need to worry about it. And so they, they start to, they get a scarifying mouth part. They scrape off the tissues of the foliage or the, the flowers on your plants. And if they get bad enough, they can actually take down, they don't take down, they don't kill plants. They make them look hideous. And so you'll see your aspens. And they love fruit trees. Fruit trees seem to be tasty for everything, from deer and rabbits to, to thrip, aphids, uh, those kinds of things. So uh, the way that you know that you have this particular insect, you can't see it with the naked eye, the leaves will curl or they'll deform. They'll actually curl up or they'll kind of morph and get this kind of C-shape to them. Uh, sometimes the, the leaves on the ends of the branches or, or the leaves can be black. And so that's all indications of thrip or eating my plants, and I don't even see them. The only way I can tell, I went through my yard this week, I took my cell phone. You could take a white sheet of paper, just something easy, an envelope from the mail you're about to throw away. Go out, and underneath a branch that might be showing some symptoms, just tap on it and see what falls down onto that paper. See what falls down onto your cell phone screen. You can, usually if you keep the power off, it's black. You can kind of see whatever's moving around. And you'll see dust moving around. There's a lot of dust moving around in my yard. And so I'm thinking it's also going to have the same thing in your yard. Something to watch. They don't kill the tree. They just make it look ugly. They can affect. Uh, they can damage fruits. So they'll go and scrape off the outer layer of that fruit. And so you get this scarring on these younger, let's say a young pear. It should be perfectly, just, just perfect. It's, it's young. It's, it should be perfect. It's got all the scarring to it. That's where the thrip have gone and scraped off that outer edge of that fruit. And of course, if in doubt, you can put a sample in a baggie. We have a microscope here at the garden center. We can put it underneath a plant microscope and take a close-up look. Now you see this ferocious looking tiny bug blown up to a thousand times its size. It's, it's pretty cool. We can help identify that. But usually that, that take a piece of paper, your cell phone out, it'll really help you. What to spray? We make a spray called multi-purpose insect spray. You put it through a hose and sprayer. It's all about quantity. You just hose down that plant and your thrip will be gone with it for, for about a week. Um, Sometimes they can fly in, they're winged, they can come in and, and kind of come back at you in a week or two, but at least you, you're get, taking the pressure off that plant. As soon as we get up to about 85, 90 degrees, thrip do not like the heat. They like spring, cold, long, cool springs. That's when they get bad, and that's what we've had, and I think that's why they've kind of 
accentuated the problems this spring. It's just been cool. And so thrip love that. It's their perfect growing environment. As soon as it's warm, the pressure will be off, then grasshoppers or something else will be out. But take a look, thrip, and protect your trees by staking them. Be right back. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, the place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. Waters companion plants in May are Vining Akebia, Indian Hawthorn, Prescott Sunshine Geraniums, and Purple Robe Locusts. Incredible long clusters of purple flowers in May that look just like wisteria flowers hanging from this local bloomer. The 8-inch fragrant flowers cover the tree profusely. Super hardy and drought tolerant with a brisk growth rate of 2 feet in 1 year. It's just the perfect backyard shade tree. You'll find the shadiest trees here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. All right, so we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes in each week with your garden questions. Just what are neighbors talking about? What are they seeing? What's in bloom? And there's some value to that. So welcome to the studio, Alisa. Thank you. Yeah. Always good to be back. Seems like the uh, microscope on the side <clears throat> patio is like in constant motion. First thing in the morning, baggies from all over the county are coming in and going, what's this? Is it dangerous? I'm like, yes! What are you talking about? It'll kill your tree, your blood. Your... Anyway. I, I appreciate the fact that they're bringing them in in baggies. Otherwise, it's like, no, don't come in the yeah. store with that. But lots of aphids. And the funny thing about aphids is everybody expects them to be like a green color. Yeah. They just think they cannot be any color. Well, they can be black, orange, you, you name it. They can be a different color. So don't Whatever they're assume. sucking on. Actually, insects are brilliant. I mean, you get cutworms and, and bud, bud, uh, uh, budworms and all kinds of stuff. They'll change color to match their environment. They're like a... Like an octopus or, or just they change like a chameleon. They're chameleon. like changing their color to match your environment. And that's why they're hard to see sometimes. But when you blow them up a thousand times under a microscope, scary. whoa, it's <laughs> freaky. Eight eyes, you know, t- four fangs, right. ten legs, nine, nine legs. <laughs> no, just... And sometimes you see them in, in, in their different life cycles. So yeah. Sometimes the aphids have wings. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just look like a little round thing. But... It's all aphids. Did you know that aphids are the only insect yes. that this gardener's aware of uh, <laughs> that gives live birth? They're asexual. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That mean- <laughs> They don't need a partner. Oh, they do it by make, themselves. To make little baby aphids. Yeah, they, they just kind of keep yeah. on going, male, female. That's why they get out of hand, like. And then they give live birth? Yeah. So they don't need a, a partner and they just give live birth. Yeah, life wow. is good if you're an aphid, and they suck on your on your on your apples, your roses, your flowers, your kale, Peaches, shard, pears. Yeah, they, they like eating fruit. stuff, and they like cool, long springs. Mm. So that's why they're going so bad. Yeah, but yeah, keep an eye out for them because they are out there. Garden questions: Are there anything good besides aphids? Besides aphids, we've already covered them. Actually, we didn't cover how to kill them. You should kill them with triple action. There you go. We've got it here at the store. <laughs> Organic, safe, doesn't hurt hummingbirds, not going to hurt your, I don't know, doesn't eat your fingernails off. Right. It's good stuff. Okay. Well, Paula has kind of a, a similar but not the same problem, but she's noticed white powdery stuff yeah. all over her roses. It wipes off. She wants to know what it is and the best way to treat it. So that is powdery mildew. And again, uh, this is where it's really important to prune correctly. Mm. So open things up so the, the air can get through, the sun can get in because it opens it up because because spores or, or bacteria or or diseases love to fester in warm, dark, 
dank, moist places. And so and it just grows. And this is mm -hmm. this is a bacteria that's eating the sugars within the leaf of that plant. Right. And it grows. It just keeps growing over and creating this this white buildup. And if you don't do anything, it can actually kill the plant or make it look terrible. It's hard to control. Uh, but there's a great organic out. This pretty new science. It's called revitalize. And so you spray the foliage till it's dripping wet, and then. Um, repeat it in about two weeks and actually permeates inside the cells of that of that foliage and helps the plant become strong enough to to repel this thing by itself mm -hmm. so it's very safe again organic kind of like triple action and just uh does a great job but i would get on it because if you don't it will just get worse and worse and as we get close to the monsoons it it almost blossoms and the entire plant will be white not good. Not good. It stops blooming. <laughs> it stops growing. It's 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 yeah. a terrible, terrible and death. You know what I'm seeing? We got, we should probably cover it. It wasn't a question, but I'm seeing it a lot in the store. Speaking of revitalize, is fire blight. Oh, I agree. Where did that come from? I what don't is that? Oh, it's bad this year. But so, you might give a quick description what that yeah, is. Yeah. So. so fire blight. We're seeing it on. Uh, it, it really focuses in on pears, ornamental pears, and fruiting pears. Any kind of pear family, and pyracantha. Mm -hmm. Mainly those two we see the most samples of. And what will happen is that new growth that was happening uh, at the very tip will start to turn black. And it starts to, to fade back um, black. And mm -hmm. that stem, that branch will start to die back. You're going, what's going on? It looks like someone took a big lighter to it, right. burned it off, <clears throat> and it stops growing. The leaves shrivel up, drop, and it just kind of, it can kill the tree. Uh, the bacteria eats underneath the bark, actually. And so it starts to, to feed on the sugar underneath the bark on that tree. So it mm -hmm. eats the tree alive. What to do for revitalize helps with that as well. You can prune your way out of it a little bit. Uh, make sure the plant is watered and, and fed. It's got to be healthy. And it can, if you don't get on it, it can actually kill the tree. This one, you really want to come in and talk to us and, and get some, 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 some expert advice right. before it takes down that tree. Mm -hmm. But cool, long, cool springs. That's what causes bug issues, small bugs, thripping aphids, and blight, mm -hmm. and, and powdery mildew, and shot hole, and leaf, <laughs> leaf spot, and leaf curl, and all these other things. There's Long, been a cool. Lot out. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> it's scary out there sometimes. Well, Liz would like to know she put her tomatoes and peppers into pots. The edges of the leaves are turning brown and kind of curling. Wants mm. to know. Is it a watering? Is it a yeah. disease? Can you tell? So, yes, it could be all those. <laughs> so it could be simply you have too much manure in the soil. So most likely it's watering. That's the number one. Probably 90% of all garden problems are water. Too much or too little. Right. Curling and yellow leaves are typically over watering. Whether it's a tomato, a tree, a shrub, whatever. And then drying tips mm -hmm. and curling or, or samples like that are typically underwatering. So deeper soak uh, and, and then, then let it dry out. Because if, mm -hmm. you're, if you're pushing that water down deeper, well, it's going to take longer for it to dry out. So you've got this whole root mass completely <clears throat> saturated. So maybe go an extra day or, or maybe keep the same cycle you're at, whatever that is, and just water an extra gallon. So we push that water down further into the soil, and that would probably help out. Right. Again, if you bring a sample, mm -hmm. we can do a lot with a sample. I'll tell you, is it a disease? What should we do? Is it just something as simple as a little bit more water mm -hmm. makes it all go? I would say if it's towards the bottom of the plant, prune off the leaves because yeah. tomatoes, they want to get disease. They want to die. And so <laughs> just anything that looks even remotely bad, Peel those off and encourage that top growth to punch up through that, that tomato cage and just yeah. take over the whole garden. Yeah. Season's young. We got a it lot is. of season oh, yeah. ahead of us. So we just need to get get those watering problems corrected and, yeah. and get it going. It's and not it's, hot yet. It's not even, no. we barely hit 80. So I it's know. it's going to be 100 here in a, in a month. It's been windy. And it has been windy. There you go. It's been, there's been thrip and all kinds yeah. of stuff. So, yeah, things are a little suffering a little bit. Well, we do have another question from Tom. He lives out Williamson Valley Road, has a large piece of property out there, talking about the junipers again. Yeah. Um, so we're seeing a lot of native juniper death. Okay. And the basic question is, is there anything you can do, or do you just kiss them goodbye? 
don't kiss them. They're, they'll <laughs> poke you in the lips. Don't do that. And don't say goodbye. There's there's hope. So junipers don't want to die. They're so robust. They've been alive for a lot of years, but they, they've been through several of these drought cycles. They know what to do. Oaks, they know what to do. They're ancient. And so what I would do is fertilize them. Take that all-purpose plant food. Just sprinkle it out underneath the drip line, that, that those outer branches. And then deep soak it. Take a fan sprayer. Take a, take a soaker hose. Just let it run for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Just deep soak it. And my prediction is you're going to have new leaf buds or, or needle buds poking through the bark. Mm -hmm. And by a month and a half from now, it'll look like a brand new tree. So how often should, should they water? So, yeah, that is a good question. So, so don't overdo it because you can kill a juniper just as fast as you can right. make them alive. Yeah. I would say one good soak a month okay. until the monsoon rains come. And I predict mm -hmm. it looks like, I mean, New Orleans is just getting slammed. There's yeah. huge Houston, volumes of water Dallas. going through that. And that band will continue. And it'll just work its way west until it finally gets to us in a month, you know, four or six weeks. And then the monsoons hit. So I, I, it looks like it'll be a wet pattern. It's early to tell, but it feels good in my gut <laughs> by watching lots gut. of radar pattern. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'd make a good weatherman. Oh, ooh, sure. <laughs> anyway, the water once a month, okay. deep soak, fertilize, pray over it, play it Mozart, Mozart, do all that stuff that gardeners do and be all good. We are out of time, Lisa, thank you. So Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden companion plants in May are Vining Akebia, Purple Robe Locust, Prescott Sunshine Geraniums, and Indian Hawthorn. Wind is no problem for this Indian Hawthorn. Rose-colored flowers cover this spring bloomer that often repeat blooms in fall. Dark blue berries adorn this compact bush that takes the wind and soaks up the sun like a native. Perfect for low-maintenance gardens with virtually no pruning, ever. Every backyard should have at least one, and only found here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Oh no! My pine trees look terrible! Never fear! Plant Protector is here! Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to the Mountain Gardener, local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. My wildflowers are stunning right now. So I put some seed out last when was that? January, February. Uh, wildflower seed need really need that freeze and thaw cycle to scarify or open up that seed so that it can 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 germinate properly. And so I, I've had them out there. They've been growing the poppies, the lupins. There's all kinds of wildflowers out there. That's the secret. So everything is growing really fast right now, including your wildflowers, and, and they should start blooming quite nicely from this point forward. And a good wildflower mix will have, they'll pulsate colors. So your poppies will come up, then the lupins, and the asters, and the gallardias. There's this whole cycle, and, and hopefully a good mix is perennial. It'll come back year after year. Now, if you want wildflowers in your yard, you can still do that, even though we're not seeing freezing and thawing. What you do is you get your wildflower mix. Say we've got a, a butterfly mix, or a deer-resistive mix, or Arizona mix. Uh, we've got different blends that we create here at Waters Garden Center. Say you want some of those. The secret before you go out and put it in your yard, throw it in the freezer artificially. Artificially have this freeze thaw. You're, you're playing Mother Nature now, and so it doesn't hurt the seed. Throw them in the freezer for a couple days, bring them out, do it again for a couple days, go plant them. 
and you've, you've just effectively done what winter normally does for seed, and now it'll germinate within literally days right now. So it's so warm. You could put a lawn down. Within days, it would start to come up. Wallflowers, days it will come up. Uh, radishes, whatever, they just grow so fast. And that's why spring is such a great time to be planting in your yard. Uh, what I do is my seed, I kind of, I, I'll, I'll encourage them. And then I'll spot treat in this garden, this bed. Uh, if there's an open spot, or let's say the seed kind of floated or the birds ate part of them, whatever. And then I'll plug in some pre-grown, I mean, just some perennial wildflowers. I love Jupiter's beard, Gallardia, Echinacea, uh, Coreopsis. There's so many great native wildflowers that we have here as perennials. That is, we sell them as perennial flowers, but really, they're so happy growing here that you can play, you can plug them into spots in your wildflower gardens and they just kind of take off and they'll add to the wildflower mix, the seed mix out there. There's lots and lots of them. So I love uh, a meadow sage. It's starting to bloom in my gardens right now. This is low growing sagey plant that animals don't eat, love it. Blue flowers, I think it comes in white. Might even have a pink out there. It's, you plug those in and they just spread and they grow in their companions with your other wildflowers. And so you can have a full bed of flowers growing right out there in the yard. That's one technique that really works. The other one to watch right now is weeds. They are also growing just as fast. Don't let them get ahead of you, whatever you do. They just get more robust. And as we get warmed up, they get tough. They're harder and harder to kill. And so if you, if you see that, go take a hoe to them or pull them up by hand right now. They're, they're tender. They're soft. They're actively growing. But in another two, three weeks, they're going to be tough and harder. They'll throw your back out just trying to get it, pull it up by hand. They'll, they'll, you have to really put your back into it to get a hoe to go through the roots. If you see that, we have a spray here at the garden center. It's called Decimate. It's a, it's a new, new product, new technology. And they're trying to replace or displace... Uh, Roundup. Roundup is, is highly effective, uh, but it's highly dangerous. It does cause cancer. It, it only really works when it's hot out. Really, if you spray Roundup right now, it's so cool at night, it's, it's not going to be as effective. In another month, in June, when it's 90, 100 degrees out, super good product. Super dangerous. I don't spray it in my house, but it does kill weeds fast and causes ulcers and all kinds of stuff on you. So Decimate doesn't do that. It's put together by Fertilone. It's called Decimate. It's a concentrate. Uh, I mean, one bottle will last you the entire year. It's more concentrated than Roundup without the carcinogens. And it works when it's cool out. That's the challenge. With a lot of your weed killers, they don't work when the nighttime temperatures fall below 50 degrees. We've been in 30s this week, or it's been in the 40s at the very highest. And so you use Decimate, you're going to get much better knockdown over a much large, longer period of time. And the back of the label kills way more weeds than Roundup ever dreamed of. Many times Roundup, you'll spray that, the weeds turn yellow, and then they come back with a vengeance. That's because it wasn't rated for that weed or it was too cool at night. And so it just really didn't do its job. Decimate is far, a far better product for the higher altitudes of the mountains of Arizona. No matter what elevations, whether it's Sedona, Camp Verde, Cordes Junction, Prescott, Prescott Valley, Highland Pines, Williams, wherever, Flagstaff, Decimate is going to be a far better product for us, for the folks that are up here in God's country. It's going to kill the weeds better for you. Now, be careful. It also kills wildflowers. So, so you want to isolate things. So sometimes I'll use a piece of cardboard as a shield to kind of help me spray th the weeds, not the thing I love. So just kind of some common sense things. Got more in store for you. Be right back after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. 
design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. Waters Garden companion plants in May are Indian Hawthorn, Purple Robe Locust, Prescott Sunshine Geraniums, and Vining Akebia. Akebia is a super vigorous vine with dangling fragrant flowers. She proliferates up arbors, pergolas, fences, and stunning as a ground cover to retain hills. One of the fastest growing evergreen vines you can plant in the gardens. You'll only find the hardiest vines at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Okay, we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes in the studio and she just shares her garden. Just whatever you're talking about, whatever you're seeing, whatever you're thinking, well, that's good enough for me. It's been good enough for me for 33 years. I think it's just fine. Now, although we should share with folks, Uh-oh. should we? we are going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. we are going to Israel. Yes, in November. November. Yeah. So hopefully, this whole Middle East thing settles down so we can go. I haven't booked our airline tickets. We just paid for the trip, <laughs> going with a wise. bunch of <laughs> bunch of uh, Christian CEO friends mm-hmm. of ours that own other companies. Just kind of hang out, mm-hmm. sip vino. What is the word for wine in Hebrew? Wine. <laughs> 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 and then go see the sites. We're going to uh, I don't know, doing through an archaeological dig, and mm-hmm. um, well, just kind of fun. Petra, yeah. the whole thing. It should be fun if we're allowed in the country. <laughs> Well, I was, because they sent an email today saying, uh, yeah, you have to have proof of COVID vaccine. And there's like, before you leave the airport, or when you get to the airport, you have to have a test. And when you get to the, where you're going, they give you a test. And, you know, so there's like. testing. Good. Yeah, which makes sense. I understand. I'll be safe. But, but, yeah, lots of. What happens if you fail the test? I... You're out of here. <laughs> Just turn around, go right back home. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. They left so, your seat. It's warm. Get back on the plane. Yeah. No. But I figure by November they should have a pretty good yeah. feel for what's going on and what's going to take. And you still going with me? Oh yeah. There we go. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So, uh, garden tips. Oh, what? we finished the travel portion. Well, just people are going. I don't know. I don't even know why I brought that care. up because I, I got the email know. too. Going, I'm, oh, I'm worried. Okay. I don't think we need to worry. Yep. Wait and see. So, what's going on in the garden? So, it's definitely warming up. Not summer yet, but we're marching that way. And I thought I would talk about those summer shrubs that love the heat that bloom in the summertime. Oh, good. You mean like lilacs? No. That's a spring bloomer. Forsythia? No. Blue spring bloomer. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we've done, I looked at our beautiful, we have this gorgeous, huge lilac, angel white lilac on the side of her house and... I was cutting off blossoms and bringing them inside, but I looked out there the other day and... It's done blooming? It's done blooming. That's the way spring bloomers are. Yeah. We're just one click away from summer and they're done. They're done. That'd be so, a nice green shrub. Oh, Could yeah. Could provide shade over there on that side of the house. Feels good. Yeah. No, it, it has its season. And I'm always talking about a four-season yard. So it is nice to have those things that bloom and smell so good and you can bring them in, but... But that time is gone, and now let's look at summer shrubs okay. that are wonderful. Like what? <laughs> well, <Okay. laughs> so Rose of Sharon is a great one for here, also known as hibiscus. Yeah. I don't know why it gets so many different names, but uh, just a really nice shrub for here. It takes the sun and the heat. Uh, you can put it on that west or southwest side of your house, and it's perfectly fine it loves with it. It, it yeah. just doesn't care come in an abundance of colors i mean you you name it they've got it from you know lavender uh white with dark red centers pinks they have uh, blue blue the bluebird hibiscus uh doubles there's a few of them the chiffon series that are double blossoms 
Um, so you, you name a color you want, I bet it's out there. Every and mountain garden should have at least one hibiscus or rose of Sharon. That's the mm-hmm. hardy hibiscus. So right. the tropical folks, it's not quite as big. The flower's not, it's maybe four inches across mm-hmm. instead of as big as your hand. So it's not like the Hawaiian or Phoenix right. or, or, but it's, it makes up for it in, in triple mm-hmm. the number of blossoms. Oh, it's right. amazing. Right. And most of them I'd say are in that five to six feet and you probably keep them down could go pretty bigger. Easy. Yeah. The they, they get, they can get bigger, but mm-hmm. you can easily keep them down by trimming them in the winter to whatever size you want. Right. There's one out there actually called purple pillar that it gets taller but it only think three feet oh is, that's kind of neat yeah. corner of a house or something right. do we have that in stock mm-hmm. oh purple pillar well we did yeah it changes by the, <laughs> by the hour right, so, time of year. so i hope we still do uh crepe myrtles are yeah. another terrific one for heat loving um bright bright color they're the colors on those are just so dynamic it's that you know fuchsia pink and the bright reds and the purples that just pop um, we have a series called the Twilight series, which I really, really do, 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 Twilight. Yeah. Oh, wait, is that Twilight Zone? There Twilight Zone. I was thinking Just the vampire you sure you one. You didn't miss the oh. imprints. I was going, why is he doing that? Because <laughs> listeners are entertained by it, right? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> so the, the Twilight series has... Uh, I'll just ignore you. What I like about it is the foliage on theirs, because some of them are dark burgundy. Some are kind of a reddish green, dark yeah. green. So just a really tremendous foliage, which really makes the bloom stand out because you have that darker foliage with it. Yeah. Um, but we have other, we have the red rooster. It's um, like a we have, color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the uh, dazzled berry series, which Ooh. is the shorter one so those are more of the dwarf ones so so do we grow crepe myrtle trees and why not we do not yeah why not because our <laughs> we get too cold in the winter time yeah. and they they don't die back they go way dormant yeah. and so we don't have enough of season for them to leave back out all the, the winters if we go sub-zero it burns them back down to the ground mm-hmm. like a perennial Right. And they restart from the ground back up. And so mm-hmm. trees can get burned back every few years. So you won't really see, at least in the 5,000 foot level and above, tree form right. uh, crepe myrtles. Mm-hmm. So everyone asks for them. But shrubs, they do great here. They do. Absolutely wonderful. Potentia, another one of my favorites. A nice little three by three, four by four yeah, shrub. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, blooms all season long. We have mango, which is kind of a orangey yellow. We have uh, frost, something, something frost. Yes, it's, white. It's white. Yeah. <laughs> we have goldfinger, which is a bright Gold. yellow yeah. flower. Uh, we have one I really like called cheesehead. Um, <laughs> you you would like that. You should have been from Wisconsin. I know. Not Prescott, Arizona. Mm. <laughs> but Cheesehead is a little bit smaller one, probably like a two by two one. It has a little bit more of a gray foliage to it, uh, but super, super winter hardy and just super bloomer. Just yeah. goes and goes and goes. All potentella or potentia. <laughs> There's a pink one too. Hardy. Pink yeah. beauty. Good. So a lot of different colors. Animals for don't that. eat it. Havelina, leave it alone. Blooms in full sun, surrounded by rock. Take a blow dryer to it. Still blooms. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Nice little shrub for here. Uh, Salvia gregii is another one. Um, I'm not sure if it's truly a shrub or a woody perennial. Which do you think? it? Oh, you have an example. I brought a purple ignition <laughs> that I'm taking to the Chamber of Commerce ah, mixer out at the mall. Sure. And so this is a brand new purple. We grew it in a one gallon size. Mm-hmm. These are eighteen ninety nine and full blooming. I just they come in reds and whites and pinks and yellow. I'm just they come in every color. Right. But purple, if you can see that on on the camera there, isn't that pretty? You folks that are just tuned in by radio or or whatever, that is so yesterday. <laughs> And so now we're podcasting or vlogging Vlogging. these on our YouTube channel and our, anyway. But you're right. It does come in at least five, I think we have five different colors available right now. Great hummingbird plant, super for attracting those hummingbirds in. So like I was saying before, but I was rudely interrupted. Is it considered a woody perennial or a shrub? It depends on the season. So (laughs) it's kind of like the crepe myrtle. 
Most years it comes back, it's a woody perennial. It comes back by these stems. But every once in a while, we get a really cold winter and it can get burned back down to the ground. It becomes a herbaceous perennial. That is, it goes hibernates underground and comes back fresh. Uh -huh. Kind of like the Miss Huff lantanas. Right. Miss Huff, that's the hardy uh, lantana. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. But most years it comes back from the, roots, from the roots, fresh every year. And so you don't see these huge lantanas like you do down the, in the deserts. Mm -hmm. You see shorter ones because they're resetting back to ground level and they start fresh. Right. They also don't have all the mange to them, the old <laughs> woody growth, because everything's brand new, fresh, fresh all the time. Okay. We are out of time, Lisa. Thank you. Great summer blooming shrubs. We'll have to cover that some further. Sure. So Ken and Lisa Lane, the mountain gardeners. Be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion plants in May are purple robe locusts, vine and achevia, Prescott sunshine geraniums, and easy elegant roses. Just plant these roses in a sunny spot and enjoy. We've married the beauty of long stem roses with the easy care of shrub roses for landscape color like no other plant in the backyard. Choose fragrant reds, radiant pinks, corals, vivacious yellows, and stately whites. Extremely fragrant and only found locally at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. I know there's lots of building going on, lots of construction, lots of new you know, just neighbors looking at you. And so privacy, uh, accenting uh, vistas, having evergreens out there, something that screens, blocks, it defines, marks the, the entrance of your driveway to, to, to uh, cypress or, or junipers out there. There's a lot of evergreens that grow really well here. Many of them are so beautiful. They can be actual physical you know, accent pieces, uh, Colorado spruce. They're big trees. They get up to 50 feet tall by 20 feet wide, and they're just the perfect specimen. I mean, perfectly, perfect branches. They almost look like Christmas trees. And then there's dwarfed varieties of Colorado, several dwarf varieties of Colorado spruce. So now you get that same perfect shape, same Christmas tree look. They're just beautiful. I mean, you just want to go hug them or dress them up or show them off in the front yard. They're accents, and they only get up to 18 feet tall by 10 feet wide. And so there's lots of low, lots of choices with evergreens. We are. In the mountains of Arizona, we have some of the largest evergreen forests in the country, in the world, grow right here. The largest ponderosa forests grow right here. And so you know that evergreens really like this type of growing environment. They like our soil. They take our alkaline water. They take our bright sun, which is kind of hard. That, that's, our sun is pretty intense. They take the freeze and thaw. So the cold in the winter, it'll get bitter cold in the, in the evening. It'll go down to you know, 5 degrees. Then it's 40, 50 degrees during the day. That temperature swing messes with a lot of plants, but not evergreens. There's lots of choices, lots of good, hardy, native type of evergreens. So the, I thought I'd co cover, well, a few of my favorites. There's no way I can take 10 minutes and just share all of the evergreens. There's a lot of choices. But here are some of the most popular, some funky different ones, and then some that are maybe accents, some, some real pretty ones. And I thought I would start with, let's start with screening. I need to block out my neighbors. They're, they're loud over there, or, or I want to block out, let's say, the dust or headlights coming into my front living room. I want to block. I want to screen things. What do I do? And so the number one seller for that by far I guess there's a couple, but Arizona cypress. If you like blue, it's the perfect tree. It grows fast. It'll grow 18, 24 inches, a couple feet a year. And it gets up to about 20 feet tall. 
by 12 feet wide, and it's thick. You're not going to see through this. So if you want to block out, let's say, those big valley areas, your neighbor is putting a new barn up there, or you're just tired of seeing all the flies from the horses over there, or whatever. You just want to block them off, put them down toward, or block the wind. You folks out in Paulden just have that wind funneling through that valley comes at you. You need to put some bigger evergreens on that southwest corner of the property to block, to keep that wind to go, so it goes up and over your property instead of through <laughs> your property. Arizona cypress are a great choice for that. Fast growing, hardy, get them up to size and then cut them off a of care, they'll go by themselves. That's how robust they are. One that's sort of like that uh, is Spartan junipers. Spartans are probably better for the smaller yards. It's green, very green, bright green. But it only gets up to 10, 15 feet tall and only about six, seven feet wide. So it's half the size of an Arizona cypress. Yet it's, it still gets very thick. You're not going to see through this plant. It's nice and green. And junipers, we're surrounded by juniper forests. Junipers just naturalize really, really well here. And so you know you can plant those, get them growing, fill them out, and then you can cut them off of most of the care you'd ever give. Fertilize them every once in a while to keep their color up. Water them if you're getting a drought, maybe once a month, and they're good. So Spartan junipers are, are, are just really good for that. There's Wichita blue junipers, same exact thing in a bright silver blue. So it gets up again, mid-teens by about seven, eight feet wide, thick, it's like a miniature native alligator juniper. It's like a miniature size that. So for the smaller yards, just off the patio or out by the driveways where you just don't need this humongous tree growing, you want to keep it more refined, look for Spartan junipers or Wichita blue junipers. And there's, there's several others. There's a skyrocket junipers. You want a, just a, a, an arrow. It's going up to the roof line. And then it just it's a column, basically. Great for the back... Let's say you've got a, a, a block wall out there and it just kind of looks, it looks sterile. You need something to soften that up. Well, well that's, where you're, that's where you line up these columnar type of plants, Italian cypress, uh, uh, skyrocket junipers, uh, blue rocket. There's several like that that are really good. And again, junipers and cypress, they grow wild. And so they naturalize really, really well. If you're truly wanting to create a wall, let's say you want to screen out that, you, you've got a hot tub and you want it to be a private hot tub. And you want to pack, stack in some, some taller evergreens where that two-story neighbor can't look down into you while you're enjoying the, the bubbles. There, what you do is you take whatever the width on that tag, let's say it grows 10 feet tall or 10 feet wide. Just take the width 10 feet wide and you just divide that by two and that's your planting space. And now as those evergreens grow, they'll have this overlapping pattern that will be tight. I mean, it'll be a living wall. You can also do the exact same thing with big shrubs. Let's say silverberry, which is a big head high evergreen native shrub. Red tip photinia, cotoneaster. There's a whole series of head high shrubs we sell here at the garden center. We curate them. We have an entire bed of nothing but head high shrubs. Uh, and then if you want to create a living wall with any one of those, you divide the width. I say it says it grows red tip photinia, 10, 12 feet wide. Divide it in two, go plant it at six foot centers, and you will have an overlapping pattern. It's a solid wall all the way up. Then you get into more shapely trees. So there's some pines. So Austrian pines are related to ponderosa pines. They're a long needled pine. Now, I've got ponderosa pines here. And they're native, they're great, and people want some of those. But really, when you're planting a ponderosa pine, you're, you're really planting a trunk. You're going to have all the foliage up there. And you have this beautiful, rich pine bark coming down. That's what it turns, they all turn into that. Austrian pines actually hold their foliage right down to the ground. They don't shed their lower branches like a ponderosa does. I actually prefer that as a landscape accent piece because it keeps that, that shape better. It attracts more birds. You can see them right there. Uh, quail love to kind of nest underneath an Austrian pine, yet it's a long needled, nice green, rich, hardy pine tree. Of course, pinion pines, uh, that's, that's the native one. 
We sell the native one, and we've got the the single leaf pinion pine, which is the one they actually harvest the nuts off of. You have pinion pine nuts; that's coming off of a single leaf pinion pine. It's got a bluer color and a thicker, thicker kind of chubbier leaf, and it produces pines or the nuts much earlier, much much sooner than our native uh, pinion pines do. But very robust, and it doesn't get the scale like the native one does. Some, some bugs get on to certain kinds of plants. Scale gets on pinion pines, but not on the single leaf pinion pine. I, I, I think that's a preferred evergreen if you like pine trees. Then you go into the spruce. Spruce and, and firs, these, these two, these are this the Christmas tree looking kind of plants. Of course, Colorado spruce we've already mentioned, Fat Albert spruce and Baccarat spruce are very bright silver blue dwarfed varieties of a Colorado. And then there's a really green one that's very pretty called Norway spruce. Yes, it's from Europe in the high mountains, just like our climate. Super bright green, but it has that same, it gets Colorado um, Colorado spruce size, but it's bright. I mean, just rich, thick green. Sometimes we can give too much blue in our yards. There's just natural Arizona blue color all around us and you just want something green and that really shines through it's a big plant so it's gonna you're not gonna see through it so you the way you design with those you put a big plant on either side of a vista let's say you're overlooking granite mountain or thumb butte or or bill williams mountain or wherever you're you want to focus the eye on you almost look like you use them like picture frames Put one over here, put one over here. And while you're sipping tea or having wine or having dinner guests on the back patio, they naturally just go, look at that view. That's amazing. That's how you design some of these bigger plants. So, uh, aspen's the same way. So those are some of the evergreens. By, by no means do I did it get to all of them, but there's a lot to choose from, and it's a good time to plant them. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, the place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. You know, I was talking about evergreens, which ones grow here, and, and how they how they perform. If you want to take a look at what evergreens are showing up, at least here at Waters Garden Center, or you just want to do research. Let's say you're from the White Mountains. You're tuned in, and you want to research what evergreens, because they're going to grow there as well as they grow here. Um, you can go to Top 10 Evergreen Trees. Top, the number 10, evergreen trees, plural, dot com. That'll take you right to our web store. It's, it's, we, when we get plants in, so the trees that just showed up this week, uh, before the purchase orders actually, while they're still in the back dock, we upload those to our website, Top 10 Evergreens. Or Top 10 Trees is another way. If you want to see the fruit trees, all the trees, Top 10 Trees. I've bought all the URLs that are, are Top 10, and, and we point them to our web store. It's got, the main thing is it's got the description. How do they grow? We've got great rep- representatives of how they look in the landscape. What's their texture? What's their color? And the description we put on those plants, they're for here. They're how they grow at this elevation, this altitude, so, compared to other places. And so you get a realistic 
representation. So you really do a lot of homework with that. And then it's got the size and the price and how much sun and all the other stuff you would expect, whether it's deer, rabbit resistive, whatever. It's got all the research. It's a great research tool. But I, I just sold, what was it, 11 Deodor Cedars to someone online. They were local. They'd been in kind of in looking at it. They went home and looked at their house. Went, yep, they're out in Chino Valley. I could use some of those. They went online and said, yep, I'm going to take 10. I'm going to take this many. Foomp. They pay for it at night. We come and we get notified instantly. We go run and grab them before they all sell to people that are here in the store. But, but take advantage of that. Top10evergreentrees.com if evergreens are your thing. And all the spruce and the pine, the junipers and cedars, cypress, they're all there. And they're all the ones that grow here. It's not... It's not everything. And then we don't deliver. So I just had someone order something from North Carolina. It's a micro website. We don't care about the World Wide Web. It's just for us. We're just showing off for us. It's a great, we're just, it's a way for us to show off this hybrid. I want to look at it on my phone while I'm here at the garden center and research it while I'm doing it and, and, and to buy it from the register wherever. That's a real thing. And we're trying to up our game and be... I guess, relevant in today's hybrid technology world. Yet we're a really small company, but we're really smart. We're really good with this tech stuff. And so it's a great way to look at it. any, any, your, your phone, your tablets, your whatever, they'll all get there. So we have lots of plants. So you're hearing that there's plant shortages or you'll hear other nurseries going, we just don't have stuff. That's because they don't have their own farms. They don't, they don't grow their own stuff. We grow our own stuff. And we, we're pulling from multiple farms all over the place. We ship it here and we just show it off here at Waters Garden Center. And so we have lots. We probably have more plants, more perennials, more flowers, more roses, more uh, blooming shrubs, more trees, more evergreens. Oh, it's beautiful aspens. Just stunning, perfect aspens came in this week. So huge maples, uh, the blaze maples, the preferred one, the fastest growing of the red maples came in this week because we, we locked those up. We had them harvested last fall. We've been rooting them out and they've came in this week. So we've got lots of stuff. Uh, you can plant now. It's a, it's a really good time. Just make sure you stake your trees. You're enriching your soil. I would say fertilize things so you, and water things in well. Uh, I should do a whole lesson just on, on watering. Maybe next week I'll touch on that. But uh, Ken and Lisa Lane, we're here at Waters Garden Center throughout the week. We love talking to fans of the show. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in. I was raised in a nice house with my family. Now I'm out on my own and have my own apartment. I love my cute little place, but there's something I do miss. I miss my mom's garden in the backyard. It was so special because over the years I was growing up, I watched her give those flowers and plants such a personal, loving touch and so much color. I miss it so. Well, guess what? I just visited my local garden center and they gave me some great ideas. And now, because of them, when I look out my patio window, I see the beautiful planter they suggested, teeming with flowers, bright Arizona flowers. Looking at those flowers gives me such a nice feeling, and it's almost like being with mom in the backyard all over again. Want help with planting? It's all online at plant-something.org. Brought to you by the Arizona Nursery Association at plant-something.org. You'll love it, too. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.